Hello, and welcome back to episode 20. Um, so it's been a while since I actually recorded. Um, although I did upload a video uh, fairly recently, I actually recorded it straight after the episode before that. Um, so I recorded like two weeks ago or something, a really long time ago. So I'm going to have to get back into this whole thing, and I can't quite remember where I left off. Um, but I remember that I was having problems with the communication. Um, and I, I also already fixed it, so I'm going to show you um, what was going wrong and how to fix all that. Um, so yeah, let's get going, I guess. Um, so last episode... Um, oh god. Yeah, like I said, I'm going to have to get back into this. Let's go to disk first. Edit manager. Alright. So there were issues with um, me sending stuff because I had forgotten to put the ID in here in the send function so I was just sending the Z next job thing like straight without the ID before it so um, that was the issue on this side and there was also a couple other things um, so apart from filling in the ID um, when you send things over RedNet they're sent as a string um, and I'm trying to send numbers over to the other side so when you're doing that um, one thing you have to do or you can do is first convert the number to a string which I'm doing here with the two string function um, so you just type two string and then you fill in the number which in this case is x and y of the next job um, and then uh, it will take that number and turn it into a string so, just as an example, if you want to send three or two, I've typed in two by accident, uh, convert or two string will turn two into this two with uh, quotation marks. That's basically what it does. Um, so that was the second thing. Now I had to do that on this side when I was sending, um, but I'm also going to have to do that on the other side. Um, when I'm receiving the numbers, because I'm going to receive them as a string, of course. Uh, so I'm going to have to convert that string back to a number. Also the previous episode was really really long and I probably made it a little bit boring at the end because I was dicking around trying to figure out what was going wrong so I apologize for that. I'll try and you know <laughs> not do that too often but uh, yeah I, I don't really prepare these things so I, I kind of just jump right in and then go for it. So sometimes things don't quite go the way I want them to and uh, yep, I get stuck and get errors and I don't know how to fix them straight away. Um, right, so this is the get job function where we're going to request a job, uh, we send to the manager that we want to have a job, we receive something back which has an ID, a message and a distance in it. If the message is yes, you, there is another job. Then we're going to receive three more messages. Now here we go. So um, we have the ID, we receive that. Now we get the X received, Z received, Y received, and these are all strings. Now they're all strings of numbers, but they are strings. So what we need to do uh, to turn these back into numbers is use the two number method. This is just uh, one of the standard methods, just like two string, um, that you could just use. You don't have to import anything or do anything weird, just write two number and then dump the string in there and it will turn the string to, for example, so if you have this it will turn it into a uh, into a number two. So that's what's going on here. So it's just turning the string of a number into an actual number and then we can actually use that um, when we go to dig our quarry because we need our coordinates to be numbers rather than strings. So then we print out what the quarry is, blah blah blah. Not much going. We dig the quarry. It's a finished job. And if there's no job available, um, job available becomes false. But I guess this was all explained last episode, so that should be fine. So the only real difference is, is I'm converting um, the num or the strings to numbers, and the numbers to strings is what I'm sending them. So that's uh, the only difference. And of course, in the uh, manager. Um, code, I forgot to uh, add the ID to this uh, these send methods here, so that was not going quite right. Um, yep, yeah, but that's it. So those were the only differences, and 
secretly before I recorded this, I uh, already tested it a little bit, so uh, I already know that it works. So I guess I did do a little bit of preparation. Right, so we're going to start the uh, manager app here. It's waiting for a quarry turtle, and this guy over here, we're going to tell him to uh, get on quarrying. Bloop. So there he goes. Um, oh, I should have. Oh. Try and overtake him. So you see here, this job at uh, minus one eight two three fourteen is going to go and fly over there right now. We'll catch up with him in a minute. Um, this guy, he's also saying there's a job available at minus something three fourteen. Um, ignore this trace. <laughs> that was when I was debugging, printing stuff, so I could see so what line it would get before it would crash. But I'll have to remove that at some point. Um, so yeah, there it goes. So we have this Cory bot here, controlled by a central computer, who's telling him, okay, start at this location, start quarrying, and he'll do that. And uh, all the other functions we built in before, you know, going back to the home location and dropping off his stuff, that all still works. Um, so he'll do all of that. And when he's finished with the quarry, once he gets down to that kind of level down there, or a little bit deeper actually, um, he'll go back and he'll ask the computer for the next job and uh, he'll hop over to the next spot. Now, we're not quite done yet, because we have one of them now, but what we really need is multiple. So, we'll uh, leave that guy to do all this good stuff. Now this guy is still running, and he's... Oh, actually he's not still running. See, that's not very really good, we need to change that. Let's see what the code looks like here. Um so if job available blah blah blah. Well, don't have to do that much. All we have to do is while mm, job uh Actually we're gonna do what true. It's not really that much of a big deal. Um then Yeah, screw it, we'll do one job available. Alright, so now comes an annoying bit where I have to move up everything by two... Whoops, two spaces. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a while loop, and it's just going to constantly uh, wait for um, bots to arrive and ask for a job, and um, every time a bot does that, it'll give it a job, and it'll prepare the next job by uh, adding up some more numbers to the coordinates and changing them so that it uh, has the next job ready and then it can give that to the next bot so that will be good once I get done with all of this pressing the space bar, there we go right so right now we have a wild job available, wait for a bot um, receive something uh, print its ID, and then if there's a job available, give it a job, and else don't. Now, if job available is sort of useless now, so rather than if job available, we're just going to completely remove that, because we already know there's a job available, that's why we're in the while loop in the first place. So we can get rid of this. Right, and I can <laughs> move all of these back after I move them forward. Efficiency, yay. Getting there. Neat code is very important, so although this is a massive pain, um, it's important to move your code so it's in the correct place. Now, what we can do is after this, we can just go while true uh, do. So this is if there's no jobs available anymore, and we uh, just um, say no jobs available. I'm going to have to receive something as well. Uh, ID, blah, 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 message distance, red end, receive. Put the no more jobs line here. I can remove this one.
This will now be rednet dot receive. Um, that'll be it. And we're going to be getting an ID, a message, and a distance, which we don't really care about. And then we're going to say. If message is equal to uh, get job, then oh no, I oh I did that. Okay, try again. I just realised I put a. Uh, one of these back here, I don't want that. Um, right, try again. If message is equal to get job, then, then we just send back nope and uh, we're done. So dump that there, that's good. Alright, so now once the jobs are finished, it will just keep looping in here and every time a robot comes back, um, ask for a new job, it'll say nope, there's no more jobs, and that'll be the end of that. Um, but we don't know how many bots there are, so... Or at least we're not registering that at the moment, we could do that. Um, but it's just going to wait indefinitely, and keep telling people that there's no more jobs. Um, and up here, it's just going to keep uh, giving out new jobs while they're available, so... That'll be all good. And I'm guessing set next job, change the jobs available if there's... Yeah, it does. Good. Alright. So, right now I'm going to grab our dude. Where is he? Oh, there he is. <laughs> Still digging. Go back. There we go. So let me dump him back here again. So yeah, there's not really much I have to add for this to work, I think. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a bunch of copies of um, the code. And I'm going to add them in all these disk drives I have here. And we're going to be placing all the bots. Um, and once that's done, then we can start them all up, and uh, this guy will tell them where to go, and they can all start doing that. Um, now that's going to be quite a, a long, boring process, is copying all these disks and putting them in here. Um, so I'm going to stop the video now, and uh, once I'm done with that, I'll upload another video, and uh, I can show you what I did uh, to set this up. Basically, it's going to be putting two disks in here, one with the original code, and one with nothing, copying it over, putting it in here, changing the starting coordinates of the robot, which is right there, um, and doing that ten times, and then uh, then I'll be back with another video. So, thanks for watching for now. Um, so this was a quick update on what changed uh, to fix this whole thing, which was not a whole lot, to be honest. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, and see you next time.